Welcome to the interview room. Today's show is going to take you back to, quite frankly, one of the worst cases I think South Carolina has ever seen. The date was October 25th, 1994, at this lake. Come with me, I'll show you what we're talking about. I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome. All right. So welcome, everybody, to the channel. Um, if you've been a longtime subscriber, I really, too, greatly appreciate your support. I really do. I'm trying to build this channel up. Um, and what I cover is things I think are important to recognize. I know it's it's a touchy sub subject, but the longer we pretend these things don't happen, the more kids are going to suffer. And I'm really honestly out to bring awareness to these situations so that more kids can be safe because it's not their fault they were born in the situation they are. But it's important for us as a community to come together to do what is best for the community. Um, and also, keep in mind what he said. Like, he's interviewed thousands of criminals, from serial killers to ministers. And on this particular channel, we tend to cover more of the narcissistic parents, um, and which is what we're covering today. If you saw the, um, our narcissistic parents, bad parents video, then you heard a few names mentioned about some narcissistic parents, um, which I said I was going to cover. And I did cover this, um, the Diane Downs case. And in this case, we're covering the, uh, Suzanne Smith case. And I wanted, this was actually going to be the first video that I did on this, but after watching this, I came across the actual interview with her, so I decided to add this as the intro um, to give you an idea on what actually happened, so that when you hear what she says, you can really see that narcissistic personality come out. And then in the next video, I will cover this full story on what actually happened so let's let's at least see the demonstration on what happened and then we will get into the video to the interview room so here we are that october fateful day a mom with two children a three-year-old and a 14-month-old strapped in their car seats in the back of their vehicle. Mom gets out of the car, and at the time, this was a very steep boat ramp. You can see it. You can still see the concrete here that's left over. Mom jumps out of the vehicle, and that car goes down this steep incline, which you can see here gains enough momentum to where the vehicle is gaining enough speed to hit this water. It initially goes out about 30 feet, floats another 30 feet, or yeah, about 30 feet, they said, and then subsequently sinks. But here, not only is that horrifying to be thinking about and terrible, I can't even comprehend it but she's standing right here watching the whole thing go down. So the up. Okay, so I just wanted you to get a visual of what, or, or at least of the reenactment. We will get into what actually happened um, later, but I wanted to show this because when I saw the interview, this was before all of this came to light, okay? So I want you to see how her story about the situation went down 
and compare it to the Diane Downs case and what I mentioned in the R Narcissistic Parents Bad Parents video. So put all that together and make your own conclusions. So without further ado, let's get into the actual video, the interview part with Suzanne Smith. Um, this is just actually going to be the video. The, this part here is going to be the video that I cover in the next segment of this story. Um, but I think it's important to understand the narcissistic side of the parent by hearing the interview first before you hear the real story. Because you're going to see the lies, you're going to see the manipulation, you're going to see how they're trying to make themselves out to be the victims uh, or the heroes. Because in narcissistic parents, there's only one of the two. They're either the hero or the victim. There's never, they're never the villain. They're never the bad guy. And so I want you to keep that in mind as we go through this interview. And so without further ado, without, <laughs> I'm sorry for just kind of carrying on there for a minute. But without further ado, let's get started. All right. So welcome or welcome back, everybody. If you've been, again, if you've been a long, some long time subscriber, I really appreciate you, you know, supporting the channel the way you have. And for all the newcomers, thank you so much for your support. Um, so in this particular part of the video, we're actually going to cover Suzanne um, Smith's story or, yeah, that's basically what it is. We're going to cover Suzanne Smith's story of what she claims happened and just make your own conclusions let's go can't even get a figure out which way he's going what kind of, of car is it what we need to know something we, we're trying to ask her now. a mazda protege what color was it a burgundy mazda protege Get them going, Pam. They got two kids. Okay. That's a black guy, she said. Okay. Black male? Yes, ma'am. You know which way? Do you, do you know which way he went? Did she, Daddy, ask if you know which way he went. Told us. Was he, did he have a gun? Okay, before I let this 911 call continue, let me just reiterate the fact that this woman killed her kids because she thought it was the only way to get this man to love her. And this is the man calling 911, okay? So, she did what she did for him. So, it could be possible that he's covering for her because he knew she had planned on doing this because she knew that's the only way to be with him because he did not want kids. And to him, the kids were in the way. So keep all this in mind as you're listening as you're listening to this 911 call. Keep all of that in mind. He didn't want the kids. She thought the only way to be with him was to get rid of the kids. And now this is where we are. So put your own conclusions together on that one. And let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like, I would honestly love to hear your opinions. I would love to have a conversation about this. Because this is what needs to be addressed. Is because in the end, at the end of the day, it's the kids who are paying for it. And unless we as a community step up to prevent this from happening, if we continue to say, oh, no, this doesn't happen in my area. No, it does. Like... This happened in South Carolina. That's not far from where I'm at. So it does happen close to home. It's just a matter of time before it hits your neighborhood. Why are we going to let it get to that point before we step up and say, okay, we need to do better? Okay. What did come back? He's trying to get her out of her now. Did he have any weapons, gun, anything? Did he have a... That looks... Going towards Chester. Did he have a gun or a weapon in there? He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Yes, ma'am. Hello? Okay. Okay. Okay, now mind you, 
she did this. And I showed you in the beginning the reenactment of how she did it. Yeah, they're going to claim to the dispatch that the guy had a gun. What? <laughs> All right. Explain in the comments to me how if you're going to drown your kids while you would mention that somebody had a gun. Because the kids wasn't shot. And furthermore, and this is where the big problem is, and this is where the narcissistic part of the problem comes in, is because she knows what actually happened. She knows what really happened. She's just trying to deflect the attention onto someone else because she doesn't want anybody to know what she did to her kid. This is what it comes down to. This is the narcissistic part of the, the... This is the beginning of the narcissistic part of it. It's because... Number one is... Again, they're the villain or the victim. I mean, I'm sorry. They're the hero or the victim. Alright? They're never the villain. So... In this case, she's trying to proclaim it as she's the victim. In this case. Even though... She is the criminal. But this is how narcissistic people operate. Is they're either the victim or the hero. And since she couldn't save her kids, now she has to play the victim card. If that makes sense. Let's keep going. Yeah, I'm on the way. Okay. Uh, uh, what what you need to me if I got Rick McLeod, my name. Do you need us to... Tell you anything from her yard or anything? Okay, can you get a tag number out of her? Then, see if you can get a tag number. It's hard to keep, I mean, have hope. I mean, I, I've, after this long a time, I, I just. Okay, and this is why I wanted to do this video first, and this is why I added what I added in the intro. Because I want you to remember the reenactment of what happened. And then I want you to compare that to her physical trauma or emotions to the situation. And this is why I wanted to add these two together. Is just watch. And I, honestly, I've only seen like the first minute or two of this video. So for the most part, we're going to be going through this together. Yes. I just don't feel like, I just, it's just been so long and I think if they were okay then they would have been found by now, but it, it, the hardest part is just not knowing. Yeah. I mean. Alright, so she said the hardest part is not knowing. And, the, and, and again, this is why I wanted to add the beginning part, the, or the intro to this, is because what she said right there, and this is why I decided to do this part first. Once I heard that, I'm like, okay, we've got to do this one first. All right, but she said the not knowing. She knows exactly what happened to those kids. But this is how well narcissistic people can play the public. And this is why I wanted to, to display this. And this is why I want to bring this to people's attention. Is because they're very good at manipulating the public and the media. And this is, again, why I added the intro into this. Is because I wanted you to see what really happened. And we'll get into the full story of what she actually did in the next video. But in this one, I wanted you to compare what you saw in the reenactment. Re and what you see in this, in her... Um, it's not really, I mean, it's not really a confession, but if you look at what really happened and then listen to her version of what happened... It's pretty easy to put the pieces together. So let's carry on. But I just want to clear, cut, uh, you know, touch bases on that. 
Let's continue. And they, and I, my heart just aches, and I miss them so much. I just can't express it, and and it's it's just a tragedy. And and I just pray and pray and pray that they'll come home safe. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me let's just pull that one back really, really quick because hold on. Look, all right. Tell me. That that doesn't look very similar to the Diane Downs case when she was given her version of what happened. She was smirking through the whole thing. And in this case, she tries to pretend to cry, but there's never any actual tears in her eyes. Yet, there's still the smirk on her face. You see that? Do you see that? Like, this is how narcissistic people are. Is She's smiling because she thinks she's fooling everybody. She ain't fooling nobody, but she thinks she is because she thinks she's smarter than you are. She thinks she's smarter than the media. She thinks she's smarter than the FBI who are or who are eventually going to kind of piece all the puzzles together. But in this moment, she really thinks she's got everybody convinced that she had nothing to do with it. So she's smirking, even though she's pretending to cry. She's smirking and pretending to cry at the same time. Anybody who has actually been around a narcissistic person knows exactly what that looks like, and that's exactly what that looks like. It's just been so long, and I think if they were okay, then they would have been found by now, but the hardest part is just not knowing. I mean, you know, and... I, my heart just aches, and I miss them so much. I just can't express it. And, and Again, that sounds a lot like the Diane Downs case, where it just seems so scripted. Like, it seems like she had planned this before she did what she did. And again, to say the not knowing is what's hard, you know what happened to your kids because you did it. And the fact that you can't shed one single tear over this says something about you. Not only that, the fact that you're smirking as you're claiming you don't know what happened to them. And it's, it's just a tragedy. And, and I just pray and pray and pray that they'll come home safe. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's bring that one back real quick. Because, hold on, let's... And I, my heart just aches, and I miss them so much. I just can't express it. And, and it's, it's just a tragedy. And, and I just pray and pray and pray that they'll come home safe. All right, so you hear the crackling in her vo voice where she's trying to make it sound like she's sad, but look at this face as she says that. Look at this face as she says that. Does that look like a distraught mother? Does that look like a mother who just lost a three-year-old and a 14-month-old? Not to me. To me, it looks like somebody who is happy to be ridding of them. And again, if you go back to the reason I'm bringing this up is because it was mentioned in a video by Little Shaman, who, again, she's very, very good. If you want to understand narcissistic personality on a scientific standpoint, she's the person to go to. She really is. She's got great videos. I love her videos. And the one that I covered, she really went in depth with it. And these are the reasons why I'm doing these particular cases right now is because she brought those up in that particular video of our um, narcissistic parents, good parents. And, I mean, look at this, though. Does this look like a woman who is sad about losing two kids? No, it doesn't. It looks like she's happy to be in a spotlight. And that is a very narcissistic trait. They don't care if the attention is good attention or bad attention as long as they are the one that are the center of attention. 
and it does and again if you go back to that video the reason this was done according to again we'll get into that in the other video but this was done for another man this was done because another man did not want the kids the guy you heard in the 911 call did not want the kids and so she felt the only way for her to be with that man was to get rid of those kids and they they came up with this whole ridiculous story so that she could get rid of her kids and live happily ever after with this guy that was the plan keep that in mind that was the plan Just touch base on here. Alright, number one. Alright, there was clearly, if you was paying attention, there was a lot of people involved in the search and rescue of these two young kids. And then the next thing that pops up is this sketch drawing that someone made up. A narcissist made up. And this is where the problem with narcissistic people come from is because they're so convincing that anyone who is unaware of narcissistic personality would not recognize these traits. They can make up anything on a the fly. They can come up with any kind of lie, any kind of description, whatever the case may be, on a fly, if, and especially if, it protects themselves. one place we wouldn't see us. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, there's a lady. She come up that door, and uh, she, some guy uh, jumped into a red light her car with her two kids in it, and he took off, and she got out of the car here at Ohio. The call came from a house along Lockhart Highway in rural Union County near the entrance to John D. Long Lake. And she's got the kids? Yes, ma'am, in her car. I don't, and she's real hysterical, and I just decided I need to call law and get them down here. The okay. So, this is actually a very key point of what I'm trying to bring to light. This is what narcissistic people will do. They create situations to cover their actions. So, um, alright, so, alright, number one, they're very good at, gla uh, at gaslighting, alright? So, they're very good at twisting a story into their narrative that they believe is real, okay? And they will purposely include other people to basically solidify that belief that what she saw was accurate, even though it wasn't. Like... In this case, like, and, and this is why I bring this up, is this is a prime example, is this woman showed up on this random stranger's doorstep talking all this nonsense about what she claimed happened, and it 
it's basically a, man, a manipulation tactic. It is basically she fooled him into believing that she was a victim. And that's what she did. And so he called 911 believing that she was the victim. And this is the problem with narcissistic personality disorder is that they are so good at convincing officials that what they're saying is true even though they're the ones who are the criminals. So let that one sink in. And anybody who has ever dealt with a narcissistic parent or a narcissistic loved one knows exactly how that feels. I'm sure if you're watching this video, if you've dealt with narcissistic people, like real true narcissistic people, I'm sure you've experienced this many times over. And this is what they do, though, is they manipulate the system to make it look like they're the victim, even though they're the criminal. They're very, very, very good at manipulation. And again, everybody who has dealt with true narcissistic people know exactly what that feels like. They know the stress that comes with that. And this is why I do these videos is because this needs to be known. There's not, a, there's not enough people that know about narcissistic personality disorder. And the word is thrown around loosely a lot. But to understand the true meaning behind it, the true definition behind it, and the true narcissistic people, like, you really got to dive deep into it to understand what it's like. But I have done that. And so I fully understand anybody who is going through that type of situation. Like, believe me, I've been there. I've, we're not even going to get into that in this video. All right, but let's continue. I just, that was another rant. But I just want to clarify, I do understand what you're, what you're going through. If you do feel like you're going or dealing with a narcissistic person, uh, uh, especially when it comes to a spouse, I fully understand what you're going through. If you're willing to reach out to me and talk to me, I will be willing to help you out as much as I can because my experience has taught me how to deal with it on a much better scale, um, especially when there's kids involved. Um, so anyway, let's continue. The woman was Susan Smith, who'd gone to the nearest house after she said she'd fled the man who took her car and children in the direction of Chester, South Carolina. What kind of car is it? What we need to know something. We're trying to ask her that. A Mazda protege. What color was it? A burgundy Mazda protege. Get them going, Pam. They got two kids. Okay. The dispatcher sent out two cars, one to the house and another down the highway in pursuit of the car. Union 105. 105, go ahead. Said it was a black male driving a burgundy protege. Affirmative 105. He had two juveniles with him. Alright, just want to touch base on this really, really quick. Um, their story was it was a black male driving a, a burgundy protege. Alright. So now, because of what she did, she put any black male that was driving a burgundy protege in jeopardy because she didn't want to admit she's the one that was the criminal. So, and this is, a, again, another narcissistic thing to do, is they have no problem throwing anybody under the bus as long as they're not the ones that are being accused of a crime. 105, from what I understood, these were small children. These are her children, and she jumped out of the car, and he took the car with the children, and he's headed toward Chester. Uh, I'll get back to then the, the sheriff, Howard Wells, heard about the call and quickly got a fix on the urgency of the case before him. Union 100. 100, go ahead. Are the victim and the suspect in this call the same family? 100, from what I gathered, by the call, they are not. This is a stranger that had jumped in the lady's car at a red light, and she jumped out. Simple. All right, now, just 
just remembered the intro, and this is why I added the intro. Honestly, I did not make it into these, this part of the story. But just remember, in the intro, she drove those kids in there. She watched them drive in there. And her first claim of what happened was that somebody had carjacked her in a Walmart parking lot. Her second story was that she was hijacked at a stoplight. So there was already two different stories before anybody was ever found. So, again, I'm just pulling the facts. I'm giving you what is presented to me. You make your own conclusions on what you think happened, but I've got a pretty good idea of what happened. <laughs> We are in Phoenix this morning, but across the country from here, the kidnapping of two little boys, three-year-old Michael Smith and his 14-month-old brother Alex, has gripped the town of Union, South Carolina. From the beginning, on October 25th, their mother Susan has maintained that she was the victim of a carjack, that her sons were caught in the middle. Right now, we want to go to Union to get the story firsthand from Susan Smith and her husband David. Remember what I said, narcissist narcissists are either the hero or the victim and in this in this case she's playing the victim because she's trying to hide what she did that's how they manipulate the system and this is why narcissistic people are so dangerous is because they are so good at manipulating the system that even the system can't see the problem Susan, how are you doing this morning? Uh, doing okay. Uh, very little sleep last night, but I'm okay. There was uh, some news yesterday and, and some promising leads uh, in this case. Uh, how, are, how are you coping with the disappointment of the news from yesterday? Um, it was, um, I was running around uh, my house yesterday morning all excited. I really thought that they had, uh, had, had really found something that was, I really thought they had found one of my children, and um, when I got to the courthouse and found out that the lead had um, disintegrated or when there was nothing there, I was very devastated, very disappointed. Uh, got my hopes up and was let down, but uh, I haven't given up hope. All right. Just in that question alone, do you not see the emotionless of this woman who just lost her two kids? Like, she is, like, very flat. Like, literally non-emotional at all. And a lot of people, and I, I brought this up in, you know, very, very early on videos about how people want to bring up the maternal instincts that I personally don't believe exist. But me as a dad, like, I cannot imagine telling this story and not just falling apart because if I lost my kid I'm not just going to sit there flat smiling smirking as if nothing actually happened like I'm going to be pissed and I want to know who did it and I'm going to want justice <laughs> at a very I'm going to keep it YouTube friendly. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just going to stop it there. If, but just if something happened to mine, I'm not going to be this flat. I'm not going to be this unemotional. And this is what narcissistic people are like, is they cannot understand how the people that are affected feel about the situation. All they understand is how they feel about the situation. And again, if you go back to what I said about the our parents good parents, or I mean, I'm sorry, our narcissistic parents good parents, her name was brought up as a narcissistic parent. And I see that fully because in the story, she did what she did because this man, the guy that she's sitting beside of right now in this picture, did not want kids. And she thought the only re the only way to get him to take her in 
would be to get rid of the kids. This is how all of this came about. Now, there is so much more in this interview that I am not even going to try to cover because this would be a so long video and I'm really not trying to make them too long. Um, but in the next video, we are going to cover what actually happened. I just wanted you to hear her version of what she said happened and also see the reenactment of what actually happened so that when we cover what really did happen you'll be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together yourself and i've actually had some people who have commented on my videos who have dealt with narcissistic parents who will fully understand the differences between the two so with all that being said if you made it this far i very much appreciate you being here i appreciate you staying tuned um, please, if you're new here, hit the like button, the subscribe button, um, the notification bell, do all that good stuff to support the channel as I'm trying to get this to grow, to bring more awareness to these situations so that we can prevent more kids from suffering. So, without further ado, everybody, y'all have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I will see y'all in the next one. Y'all have a great one.